Transformers Revenge of the Fallen is the greatest movie ever made. Since its release in 2009, the film was absolutely loathed by critics, audiences, and fans alike, even winning the Worst Picture Award at the Razzies. Honestly, this movie was like the cock of Lexington Steel. It's not that it was thick or dark, it's that it was just long and unappealing. I remember seeing this movie when it came out, and I thought it was one of the scariest horror films I've ever seen. This was elevated horror unlike any other films in the genre, because I was scared and crying over all the chaos I was seeing on screen that I couldn't even finish it. That being said, I'm on the contrary to say that the critics are fucking dumb douchebags because I think this film is a misunderstood masterpiece. The first thing you should know about Transformers 2 is the larger scope and themes compared to the first film. The first film in comparison is, oh, it's about some horny teen who gets some old ass car who turns out to be a robot, then the other robots come to Earth to fight the evil robots and seize control of the big box. Transformers Revenge of the Fallen is all about lore. The Transformers lore, if you will. Long story short, the titular Fallen was revealed to have existed as early as 17,000 BC, having betrayed who were essentially the Autobots' ancestors. This therefore makes them a far more sinister threat than the Decepticons that Optimus and company have been fighting their whole lives. The later Transformers movies would expand the lore even further, with the implication that Transformers were present during the Moon Landing, the Dinosaur Age, the Medieval Age, the 1980s, and in the next film, the Beast Wars. Transformers 2 also subverts the expectations of the MacGuffin. In the Marvel movies, you have the Infinity Gauntlet, which is essentially the driving force of the entire franchise. Thanos used it to wipe half of humanity before the Avengers made their own to send everyone back and kill Thanos. It was nothing more than a deadly weaponized MacGuffin that was harmful against all life on Earth. The Transformers movie set the blueprint with the Allspark, a cube that had the potential of rebuilding the Transformers home planet Cybertron. In this film, it essentially becomes deadlier than ever, affecting Sam Witwicky, played by Shia LaBeouf, and his mental health. Sam's whole arc in this movie is trying to live with giant shape-shifting robots while dealing with the awkward stuff about his college life, like his parents who are oblivious to getting a high from weed brownies, his professor who openly sexually harasses young girls, and human transformers. You can see that the AllSparks influence worsens him once you get to this scene, where Sam essentially loses his mind. He tries to explain a conspiracy theory about Albert Einstein being wrong. I just finished your book and there's only one problem, Einstein's wrong. <laughs> while making two faces associate with the word nut. First, he makes this stupid ass face where he looks like a squirrel. Squirrels are rodents who are well known for gnawing their tiny little teeth on nuts. But then we get to a less innocent face a few seconds later where Sam looks like he's having the biggest nut of his life. This sexually suggestive face pisses off the professor which can be seen as a protest against his own sexual harassment against other girls by giving him a taste of his own medicine. Once he snaps back to reality and realizes what he had gotten himself into, I am the Alpha and the Omega. That's how you know. Shit just got real. Speaking of which, director Michael Bay returns to this film after directing the first Transformers in 2007. Michael Bay is infamously known for having way too many explosions in his movies to the point of becoming a running joke. This film, however, uses explosions in a way that doesn't feel like a running joke. You see, Transformers 2 is all about chaos. Maybe it's Sam's college friend screaming in the back of the car, or seeing the fallen get obliterated by a battleship. The violence between Transformers has elevated so much that the military had to become less lenient with them. The explosions in this movie accurately represent the chaos of seeing two giant robots or more fighting in a big city, or Transformers just having extremely powerful rocket launchers, whichever works. While Dark of the Moon somewhat scales this chaos back a bit, Age of Extinction is perhaps the closest Transformers film to equal the chaos of Revenge of the Fallen. However, I'd say that film is significantly worse. How old are you? 20. She's a 17 year old girl. I just call the cops on you because this is illegal. She's a minor. We're protected by the Romeo and Juliet laws. Revenge of the Fallen is a very loud movie, no doubt. But perhaps this was intentional, showcasing the danger of alien threats to our world, similar to other films like Man of Steel. Legendary actor John Turturro also returns in this movie. Here, we see how much he's fallen. No pun intended. Much like how the Fallen was disgraced by the other primes at the beginning of the movie, John Turturro perhaps closely represents the humans having similar experiences, having went from the chief agent of Sector 7 to a butcher. We even see a close-up of his ass, shot from a very low angle. Hold on. What is that? And we even see him below a Transformer with big balls. I am directly below enemy 
In case you haven't noticed, these two shots represent John Turturro's fall from grace. After being embarrassed in front of Bumblebee in the last movie, and the disgrace he received from Sector 7 in between films. Back to Sam, as I've mentioned earlier. He has to learn how to live with Transformers. He becomes much more involved with their conflicts than the last movie, which can be seen once he enters Transformer Heaven. The average audience member may ask, why does he go to Transformer Heaven and not People Heaven? What if I told you that this might just be because of a little touch of an AllSpark shard? As I've said earlier, its influence on Sam has increased since the last movie, for better or worse. He has also made friendships with the Autobots, especially Bumblebee since the last movie. So when he enters Transformers Heaven, this may be a representation of them hailing Sam as their human champion. A regular guy with the heart of a true Autobot, differentiating him from all the other humans on Earth, especially Mark Wahlberg and Megan Fox, his parents and college friends, who enter regular Heaven instead. This therefore makes Sam the chosen one as he would dedicate his life to helping the Autobots in their great fight against the Decepticons. At least until Age of Extinction. Transformers 2 is the thinking man's blockbuster that you don't really see anymore, especially given how it had to be written in such a short amount of time due to the writer's strike. It's a film about chaos and visualizing humanity's worst fears, but most importantly, it's about the fall from grace. Most blockbusters would see the protagonist take a leap of faith, and becoming far superior versions of themselves compared to where they started. Revenge of the Fallen is perhaps the polar opposite about the dangers you can probably fall into if we're not responsible with the miracles we've been given. Most blockbusters now tend to polarize audiences and critics for its dark tone and themes, but I'd say Transformers 2 set the blueprint for those kinds of movies. And it's unfortunate that we may never see a movie like this again, even in the Transformers franchise itself. Also, this movie gave us a Linkin Park song, so 10 out of 10 stars. Come back next week when I discuss Space Jam and its critiques of modern communism. Charlie's like a melody in my head that I can't keep out of me singing like